A lot of it was I had a backlog of material. The songs that I've been writing for the last five or six years and one that I would had for years and it just wasn't material that was right for Sleep at the Wheel. Um, but uh, as a songwriter, um, you know, I needed an outlet for my songs and I'm that outlet. And I knew I needed to get this album done. It's been very satisfying. I've had one other solo album I did around, oh gosh, I don't know, 11, 12 years ago. And, um, I thought it was about time. I knew a man whose life was bitter and so full of strife. He left this world one day, he went away, he'd gone astray. Nothing I could say, nothing I could do. Just give a little peace, a little piece of you. The main thing that I wanted to achieve was to bring Lloyd into the project. Um, you know, when my dad first talked about doing the solo project, he said, you know, we're going to, me and you are going to do it together. And, you know, I felt it was important to bring Lloyd in, uh, not only for his, you know, musicianship, um, but to also kind of act as a liaison between me and my dad and really help us, uh, you know, make the, the, the project, you know, be what it needed to be. All that I ask is one single quest. Give me some peace, Lord, give me some rest. Well, you know, I, uh, I was a part of a, a, a birthday party thing for uh, Rod Kennedy at, uh, from Kerrville at, at the Paramount about three or four years ago. And it's the first time I'd ever heard Ray, uh, Ray was on there with just acoustic guitar and vocal. It's the first time I'd ever heard him just sit with an acoustic guitar and sing. And, and he actually did uh, uh, one of the songs from, from the record, uh, uh, Just a Little Piece. Uh, on that show, and I was blown away. Just yeah, you know, he just sat there and finger picked and sang, and I, I told him then, I said, man, you need to, you need to get that recorded. You know, it's like uh, I knew he was going to just bring in some good, some good vocal oriented uh, lyrical songs. Uh, I've known Lloyd for 35 years or more, and he's uh, one of my best pals and one of the most talented guys I know. And Sam, my kid, uh, was engineering, and he basically took the bull by the horns and, and made me finish it. It was a country song about a love gone wrong, brought a sigh and a tear to his eye. With a tear in his voice, he'd sing that song, and he sounded like he wanted to die. One of the songs I co-wrote with Chris Wyland up in uh, Nashville, it's called, He Was Killed by a 45. Now, some of y'all might think we're talking about a 45, but we're really talking about that little record with the big hole, the 45 RPM records. He was sharper than a blue suede suit J.J. Kale was, was, was all my dad's doing and just kind of, I think I, I basically said we need to replace a couple of tracks that we had cut and uh, just keep pushing. And uh, that was, you know, obviously J.J. died and, and he, you know, had a relationship and, and felt uh, compelled to write, you know, a tune about him. And musically, it was also the same thing. It was pushing him outside of his uh, comfort zone and having him do things that maybe he wanted to do, but he's never had the chance to do. Uh, also, the song, uh, I Ain't Looking for No Trouble on there, uh, that's, that's kind of the, the most up-tempo song on the record. It's got some great instrumental parts because it's, it's a real driving, almost like a, almost like a Paul Simon uh, rhythm track. We were out with Bob Dylan and uh, Larry Campbell was this guitar player and he taught me this new tuning. And I was messing around with it, and uh, that's how the music part came, and then the words just sort of flowed. And my favorite line is the last one where it says, don't ask me for my opinion if it's something you don't really want to know, and don't ask me for directions, or I just might tell you where to go. I've had some hard times, but you beat all I've ever seen. Pay no attention to the man there behind the screen. It Ain't You was sent to me uh, by Gary Nicholson. Uh, 
awesome singer-songwriter. The demo is Waylon Jennings uh, with just an acoustic guitar and um, you know, a song about growing old and I felt the, the project was definitely a somber kind of reflective you know, uh, concept and it, it just made perfect sense to me. The Willie thing was definitely uh, my dad asking that. Obviously, conceptually, it fits. It ain't you. No, it ain't you. I hope people go, gosh, I didn't know Ray Benson could write songs and play like that. That's what I hope happens because there's a whole lot more going on in my life musically and uh, this is my chance to show it. So I really hope folks take a shine to it. Every time you give, you get so give a little piece, a little piece of you.